I want to make a quick video today to show you how to check the fuses in your multimeter. Anytime that you have a multimeter that measures current, it has to be fused because when you measure current, you'd move your lead over to one of these positions, place the leads in series with the circuit so that all the current has to pass through the meter, and that's how it measures it. So in order to protect the meter so that too much current doesn't destroy it, they're fused. In this case, we have two options. I can measure milliamps, and that position is fused at a 400 milliamp fuse, or I could measure amps, and this one is fused at a 10 amp fuse. And those fuses can blow, but there's a quick way to check those, and that's to turn the multimeter to the ohm setting. If you've got an audible continuity checker, you can also hit that button so that it beeps when you have continuity or, or low resistance. And take your red lead and place it in each of these two terminals. So I'll place it here, and if it beeps and shows continuity or low resistance, it means the fuse is good. So that one is good, but that one is not. The 400 milliamp fuse is blown in this meter, so I need to replace that one. Now I also have another meter here, just to show you another example. This would be the same thing. So this one is fused at 20 amps and at 400 milliamps. So I would turn this to the ohm setting. I can also hit that button so that I've got the beeper. This one's not quite as loud as the other meter, but it does beep. I've got my red lead. I'll come over here and I'll check. I don't hear anything or see anything, so apparently the 20 amp fuse is blown. But in this case, the 400 milliamp fuse is not. That one shows continuity. So that's how you check the fuses in your multimeter and uh, can make sure that they're working. Now I want you to be aware that if the fuses are blown, that doesn't affect the operation of the multimeter in any of the other settings, whether you're measuring voltage or resistance or anything else. It only affects it when you're measuring current, and, and then again it only affects it in the one setting that is blown if you only have one fuse that's blown. The other, the other setting would still work. So now I'm going to take just a minute and show you how to change the fuses in your multimeter. I've got three meters here that I'm going to use as examples. I've got a Fluke 88V, a PDI DM930, and a VC99. So we'll start with the Fluke. On this Fluke meter, we basically have to pull the silicon boot off of it. And on the back, we'll see a screw, and then we have to take off the battery case here. So. I'll remove the, the battery cover. You'll see there are two screws under here. And once we have it apart, we'll see the two fuses here. This meter, if you remember, has a 400 milliamp fuse and a 10 amp fuse. So they're right here, grab them with a pair of pliers, makes them easier to pull out. On this Fluke 88V, you've got a DM44100A, that's the small one. And this one here is a DM11A, so it's an 11 amp fuse. And the other one is a 440 milliamp fuse. So they're rated just slightly higher than what they're labeled at on the front of the meter. Anyway, so that's how you would take care of the fuses on the flute. Next, we'll do the PDI multimeter. These are the fuses we'll need for the PDI meter. We have a 20 amp fuse and a 500 milliamp fuse in this meter. And these are the sizes. One is a 1.25 by a 0.25 inch fuse, and the other is a 30 millimeter by a six millimeter fuse. These six screws right here need to all be removed. It's a lot of work to get those six screws out of there. 
but they're all loose now. The back cover should come off like this. And that exposes the two fuses. This is a 20 amp fuse, and this one is actually a 500 milliamp fuse, even though it's rated at 400. Pull these out like this. And by the way, this is a great opportunity if you still have another meter. Set it to my continuity setting. I can double check these fuses just to see if they're good or not. That fuse is okay, but this 20 amp fuse needs to be replaced. Okay, so I'll set this meter aside. I won't put it back together right now. now let's change the fuse in the uh, VC99. This VC99 is a, a cheaper meter, but in my opinion for the price, which is usually around $30, it's actually a pretty good little meter. Um, you'll see it is built a lot more cheaply than the others, but it's, it's a decent meter for the price. Okay, so this one's fairly easy to get apart. I've got a screw here in the center. I'll take it out. And I've got to take off the battery cover on this one, which will in turn expose a couple more screws. Okay, once I do that, the back should come off. Set that to the side. And now there are a whole bunch of little screws here but it's important that you don't undo any of those or things will start falling apart except for these two screws right here. There's a screw right here and a screw right here that needs to come off. To take this circuit board off. I can flip it over and now you can see here we have the two fuses and these fuses are both the same size. These fuses are both 30 millimeter by six millimeters. And I would put a 500 milliamp fuse in it and a 20 milliamp fuse. And with all of these meters, make sure that the fuses you purchase are fast acting fuses. And so to change these fuses, we carefully, I like to grab them by the ends because they are glass fuses. I don't want to break the glass. We pull them out like this. Now, because these fuses are the same size, you'll need to pay extra attention in this meter to make sure that we get the right fuse in the right position. This fuse is the 20 amp fuse, and the fuse right here underneath of the, the switch is the 500 milliamp fuse. So just make sure you don't confuse those and mix those up. Anyway, so we'll replace those fuses. Just flip this back over. On this meter, you have to be careful that the little pieces, you've got these little plastic pieces that are here. You've also got the buttons. You better make sure all of that stays in place so when you flip it back over, it slides back into place correctly. But then you put all the screws back in. Just do the opposite of what we did to take it apart. And that's how you check and change the fuses in your multimeter. Remember that you can check the fuses without taking the multimeter apart. And also remember that your multimeter will continue to function in the volts and ohm settings and all the other settings when the fuses are blown. It just won't be able to measure current in the setting that has the blown fuse.